My name is Morgan Page. I'm a DJ, remixer, and producer based here in Los Angeles. And I've been making electronic music for about 15 years. And I feel really fortunate to be able to do it uh, for a job and to travel the world. So, you know, I've played everywhere from India to China to Brazil, across North America, Australia. The MPP 3D tour was uh, sort of the first time anyone has ever taken a 3D tour on the road. For a full tour. It was cool to try something new and pioneer and, and put a lot of your own money into something, really invest in the show. And I wanted to do something different and stand out. So we brought 3D LED panels, packed it in a semi truck, and brought it across North America for 55 shows in two months. So crazy tour uh, and really cool, really cool payoff just seeing people react to the visuals like this. To have um, you know, the visuals work in concert with the music like this. 3D was definitely a challenge, it was a lot of work. It took about 30 animators to do all the visuals. But it's cool because it's actually gonna change the way I do music. Uh, it may change the way that I compose. And, you know, almost like you're scoring a movie, you need to create custom music for the show. So for the intro and outro and things like that, I did custom pieces of music uh, from scratch. So it's a whole new approach, a whole new way of thinking about your show. For me, DJing and producing both work hand in hand, and you can't just do one. Uh, they both feed into each other. So, to create music, you know, is great, but you've got to test it out. You got to play in a loud club where people are drunk and dropping their drinks and yelling and stuff. So, you need to have that that road experience, and then uh, you need that still quiet time. When you're back in the studio to focus. I don't work so well on the road, so maybe I'll get drafts done, or maybe I'll make mix tweaks on the road, but the, the bulk of the creative time is back home in the studio when I can focus and sort of block out the world. So a while ago, uh, a friend of mine, Tommy Trash, who's an amazing DJ and producer from Australia, and he's recently gotten really big in the US, uh, I was talking to him about producing in Ableton, and uh, we were both kind of sharing plug-in tips, and, and I was asking, like, what limiter do you use on your bus? Sorry, Tom, I'm going to just try to see you. And he was like, oh, I use the Sonic stuff. I use the reverb, I use the EQ, and I use the limiter on the master. So uh, it was a, a brand I didn't know a lot about Sonics before, and I, I got into it, and now they are my go-to plugins. There's so many choices out there right now. But you really have to have good bread and butter plugins, ones that you can reach to, and I don't have any time to tinker with 20 different EQs and compressors and limiters and be a being the results. I need to kind of get those results really quickly. And if it doesn't work, you know, I remove the plugin from the folder. So I have to get in, work quickly, move on. And I think that's what I would really appeal to me about the Sonic stuff was ease of use, uh, kind of simplicity, and you know, being able to get the result and, and move forward. All right, today I'm gonna to show you a bunch of tips on how I use kind of my go-to Sonox plugins. Uh, right now on all my sessions, pretty much using the uh, reverb, the EQ, the transmod, and the limiter. But we're gonna start with transmod. I'm gonna show you how I use it on arpeggios and kind of plucky synth sequences. So this is a song in progress. I'm working on my next album, and uh, I'm sort of doing draft a days, doing uh, one concept a day, sort of speed writing. And I go through, I, I compose a beat, a chord progression, um, basic melody, and try to wrap that up, and then send that to vocalist. So this is a real basic idea, and um, you know, I'm just going to go explore how I'm using the Sonics plugins individually on these different elements of the draft. So this is an arpeggio that I'm going to play here. And that's sort of driving the beat forward. It's already pretty punchy, but I wanted to kind of use transmod to really accentuate the pluck and the pick of the attack. So I'm going to pull up transmod. 
Right now it's a neutral position. It's already pretty uh, sort of a plucky sound anyways, and I like to pick, I really think it's important to pick the right source sounds. So it's hard to add pluck if uh, a sound doesn't have any attack to it. But sometimes it, it sound is too plucky and sometimes um, you wanna reduce that. Or sometimes you wanna accentuate that. So with this, we're gonna listen to both ways. That's pushing it, that's adding more attack. And that's re removing the attack right there. So now that's one of my favorite ways to add a little more snap to a kick, to an arpeggio, uh, to ride cymbals if they need a little more attack, if they're sounding soft. And I can kind of use that to take an element and make it softer for more contrast. Because if everything's snappy, it's, there's not really going to be that um, organic contrast between the elements and it's just going to uh, pile together on it and be firing at the same time. There's a lot of other stuff happening on here. There's pads, there's other leads, and I want that arpeggio to stand out and not get totally lost. Also using the Sonox Reverb. I'm using it to take a very mono bass sound that has a lot of mid-range content and really kind of expand that uh, just so you can hear the bass more and get more of a room sound to it. There's a, a mid-range sound coming from Massive. There's already a little reverb within Massive, uh, but you can hear how it's expanding the image with the Sonics reverb on there. So it's adding a little bit of a tail, and then uh, that tail is getting side-chained a little bit. Um, so, you know, I'm just trying to make it pump a little more with the beat and create a little more ambiance. So I'm gonna exaggerate that a little bit so you can hear it a little more. So that's with the reverb kind of pushed up a little harder and then uh, without it. That's an important technique for me to make stuff sound louder, to create that perception of loudness, that there's reverb, that it's sort of pushing air in the room. So, you know, I'll use distortions for that. I'll use EQ to kind of highlight the mid-range where the ear is most sensitive. And I'll use reverb to really push that sound like the sound is shouting in a room. So moving along uh, on this draft song that I have for you, um, I'm using the EQ, uh, the Sonics EQ, especially as a high pass. And pretty much on the master, I want to get rid of the really low stuff below 20 hertz. Sometimes I'll go as high as 25. Some people go as high as 30. I think that's kind of pushing it. And I'm using it to get a little, I'm using it to get a little more headroom because uh, there's a lot of this low subsonic stuff that is kind of crowding the mix. It's a little subtle. I can't you can't hear it directly there, but I can see that I'm getting a sort of a snappier, punchier mix. It's a little bit louder, and I'm also boosting a little bit uh, just to get a little more high end EQ. And where is that? It's about 14k, just to get a little sparkle in the mix that's lost during some of the compression. And rolling off a little of the highs, um, a little of that really high stuff, about 18 and a half k. So don't really need piercing, piercing highs on there, especially with digital stuff. So that provides a little more clarity, a little more loudness. Um, and now some of the most important elements of the mix, you know, is how you're using the limiters. So the most important way uh, on this mix, I've put the limiter is at the end of the chain after the EQ and I'm pushing it pretty hard. I'm adding a lot of gain here. A lot of makeup gain. 
And on the Oxford limiter, obviously the input is sort of setting your threshold level. That's the, one of the things I really like is that you have uh, that simplicity. You have less knobs to work with. Um, so I'll play with the attack a bit depending on the sound I want. Sometimes I have the, the attack super fast. Other times I want to hear more of the attack of the kick. So I'll put that in there. Uh, and I'll just be looking to see how much gain reduction I'm getting. And you could push the Oxford limiter pretty hard. Um, you know, maybe six dB, um, I might push it that far. It depends on what I want for the song, what kind of flavor. And sometimes I want it really subtle. Maybe I only want two or three where it's just kissing the meters. getting about uh, 5 dB of gain reduction on there. Um, really important thing on there is the enhance curve. Uh, I usually have it at 80. Some people think I'm crazy because that's really pushing it, but uh, I really like it there. Um, it really does make a difference. So you can hear, this is with it. This is without it. I'll put it back in. So to me, it adds just a little bit of, it's more warmth, it's a little louder. There's a certain roundness and a bottom end, and that's why I choose the Oxford limiter, because it's just a something, has a sort of little X factor with the mix. It gets it loud, I can push it hard, and that kick just gets even bigger. I did something kind of experimental with this. I put transmod actually on the master in a very subtle way. And it's not something um, that I would do for every track. I would try to use it in a very subtle way if possible. So on the main mix, I actually have overdrive up. Uh, I'm just pushing the ratio up a little bit. I'm not messing with the other controls. As you can hear, it's about like a dB and a half, maybe even t two dB quieter when I take it off. So sometimes it's a little bit like playing with fire. You don't want to go crazy with it because when you solo elements, uh, it'll trigger that transmod in your soloing tracks. But when your song is done and you really just want to add that little extra bit of juice, I'll either put you know an inflator on it or I'll put transmod. Um, those are my two choices before the limiter to kind of get a little more volume in there since I'm not using a uh, compressor on the mix. So that's without and then with. And that's how I use my Sonox plugins.